Hello, I'm Kevin McLeod. I'm presenter of Grand Designs on Channel 4, but I'm here to tell you about something else entirely. Um, in Britain, construction is responsible for about half of our total carbon dioxide emissions. In fact, our homes, the places where you and I live, are responsible for about 27% of total emissions. Not only that, but when we build houses, we tend to throw away, or rather the constructors tend to throw away, around 20%, one-fifth of everything they use. So for every five houses built, one gets trashed. A few years ago, at Grand Design Live, uh, I was involved in the construction of a house on site. It was called the house that Kevin built. And uh, what we tried to do was to showcase some new technologies, construction materials and, and construction methods that were just emerging onto the market. And we did this by constructing a house in just a few days. What we're going to do now is reconstruct that house at the University of Brighton. The University of Brighton have very generously offered us the land. And what we intend to do, uh, with a great deal of help from you, is rebuild it down on that campus. Uh, to get to the point, what we really need is £300,000. And we're asking the construction industry, we're asking individuals, organisations and charities to help us do this. With me is Duncan Baker-Brown. Duncan was the architect of the project. Duncan oversaw, actually, the project. Just tell me a little bit about, about why, why this is happening. You're, I mean, you teach at Brighton. You're, yeah, you're a yeah. senior uh, lecturer there. So, so why do you want to do this? I, I want to rebuild your house because I want to involve a lot more people this time. Um, a lot of people saw it last time on the television, but um, I realized that it was actually a very extremely innovative project using only materials that grow in fields and in woods. Yeah, you know, it's the, first the, the, the grown room. house. Yeah, the grown yeah. house. The yeah. first house made entirely of replenishable materials that can compost. So you, you won't be building it in six days then? No, that's no, that's no, not no, the we, plan? I mean, no, we're going to slow it right down. We're going to slow it down to um, about three months. So then we can get school children involved, students involved, local community groups. They can actually get involved in some of the build process, which is incredibly unusual and they'll get a lot out of it. They'll understand that actually straw, hemp, recycled plastic, whatever it's gonna be, yeah. can actually constitute a building. And it really folds in nicely with the university's 1010 campaign. We've signed up to it. We've also got an in-house uh, pledge of reducing our carbon emissions within the university by 50% within the next five years. So uh, the house that Kevin built will just be like a nice little exemplar um, project demonstrating this low carbon lifestyle. So, so it's not just about the process of putting it together and learning from that, it's also about the, 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 the lessons learned from the methods of construction, the lessons learned from the materials and yeah. the, the analysis of the, if you, the full sort of life cycle analysis of those materials. Exactly, and their I mean, we'd, we'd like students and uh, school children involved with the making of the construction systems. It's also the ongoing research with the project. Yeah. I mean, once it's built, um, we're not going to complete it, we're just going to do the building fabric and the in interior of the building. We're going to leave up to students on site to design the kitchen, the staircase. Oh, right, right, because before, I mean, when we built it at Grand Design Lab, we, 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 we kitted it out. Obviously, we had tens of thousands of people coming through on you, know, having built it in just a few days. Um, and obviously, there was a kitchen in, and yeah. we tried to sort of furnish it in, 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 in a basic way. So, the plan in, in putting it together is to offer it. As a, clearly as an experience, as a resource, uh, long term. We, we believe it's uh, going to be an inspiration for the students and beyond the campus, and that's why we want to get local schools involved. It's a nice sort of high prof profile, iconic project. But this it's, is going it's right in the middle as well, isn't it? It's right, right in the in, right in, in the, the centre, centre of Brighton, right on campus at Grand Parade, right near the pavilion. It's going to have its own entrance, so people can go there when the campus is closed. So it has an appeal and and and, and, and uh, an accessibility beyond the beyond yeah, the students. So I mean, you know. and and I mean, there, there's a lot of green initiatives happening in Brighton and Sussex at the moment. Yeah, so, yeah absolutely. Uh, you know, can plug into all of that. The thing that excites me is that there's going to be some ongoing monitoring. So we're working with the BRE. That they're very good at monitoring. Building research establishment. Building research establishment. They're going to be monitoring the building in their professional way. But we're going to do it with students as well. So we've got postgraduate students who can write papers. And well, I was going to ask whether or actually you're going to put these students in there, whether you're going to sort of perform the ultimate experiment and actually see how people react and live and, yeah. and, and I, use I think, the building. I think, I mean, it's going to be inhabited anyway as a research centre. We've got a whole 
a lot of people queuing up wanting to be involved in, in using it, but I think we'd, we really would miss an opportunity if we didn't have students living it, in it, seeing how it really works, how, how things are, you know, are they going to be successful or not. Yeah. We can say that it was the first UK A star rated building, which apparently it was, but it was only up for two days, so you know, it's there and gone. But you know, to actually live in it and see if these things really work, that's, that's what the construction systems require. They need, the, uh, they need to be actually used also in the longer term, uh, I mean, there, there is a, a very, very serious role here, isn't it, as an exemplar and as a, as a, as a, as a project which demonstrates the viability of these locally sourced materials in, in meeting and challenging a very, very serious threat, which is that of, of, of climate change. Yeah, of and the, it seems to me that one of the great pluses you have here above and over isocyanurate foam and very high-tech materials and concrete which are all touted as eco-materials. Yeah, yeah, Here you're yeah. talking about materials which lock carbon into exactly. the structure, lock carbon into the building. So you start off with a building which is already carbon positive. It, yeah, it's already yeah. sucking CO2 yeah, yeah. out of the atmosphere into the structure to make it. Yeah, I mean, by using the locally sourced organic materials, they've grown because they've locked carbon, they've yeah. given, off, uh, given off oxygen. It's a big plus plus hardly any road miles associated with them, so it's a really minuscule carbon footprint. In use it will have a minuscule carbon footprint. The other thing though, again, that excites me is the fact that we will be adapting and changing the building over the years. So, for example, you know, that there's in window technology, there's all sorts of windows coming out now that are getting better and better in terms yeah. of their thermal performance. And we won't be using the windows we used last time, we're going to be, I mean, in, in two years, or almost three years, window technology is leaked. That's a forward. really interesting idea that you don't make a building which is static mm. but which evolves with technologies and which allows you to then measure those improvements and those retrofits, those yeah. refurbishments. So we can do that with even with the building fabric and we'll be doing that periodically with the interior of it because the school's got product designers, interior designers, yes. artists who are all going to want to get involved in yeah, this project. Yeah. They won't want to leave it alone. Nice. It's, really, it's a really exciting opportunity isn't it because it's, yes. it's, it's dynamic and ongoing and, yeah. and as such is, it evolves and, and provides a continuing resource. Yeah and I think that I mean the, the university is committed to working with local community groups it's got to you know they're not internalized rarefied environments anymore they've got to engage with the local community and this will do that in a very positive and then tangible way I think and we'll, we'll have a lot of people who do want to get involved in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're looking for construction companies, charities, green organizations or to contribute to this fundraising exercise. The great thing is, of course, fundraising is gift aided and there's a government match funding scheme as well. So we get almost twice as much money as you contribute. So please, if you look at the website below me now, please contribute as fast as you can.